anybody doesn't know what is shale gas? Shale gas. That was the topic at last week's meeting of the Council of Canadians, a citizens group best known for its water rights advocacy. But it was Kim Cornelison, vice president of the Quebec Association Against Atmospheric Pollution, or AQLPA, who was doing the talking as she took a critical look at the Quebec government's handling of the shale gas issue. Well, what I think, I'm, I come from the university and I'm used to research thing and I'm used to give sources and I'm used to, to look at both sides and see what side, side is best. It's the same thing for journalists. Well, it really seems in that particular, um, uh, with that particular shale gas, there is no, the government refuses to say maybe it's not a good idea. And it's distressing because there's a lot of citizens who say, stop it. The presentation came in the wake of the heated public hearings on Quebec's shale gas development that began in Saint-Hyacinthe last Monday. Individuals and citizens groups are demanding a freeze on shale gas development and that more research be done into the risks and benefits of developing the resource. What is really, really, really interesting with what's happening now, even with all the crisis and everything, is how powerful citizens are. They have, you know, in saint Saint last week, it was really, they said it was really um, aggressive. I don't think so. I think that there were some couple of young men that were really screaming more. But what was really, really interesting was to see that all the questions were really researched. The, the, the comments were nice. The, really, you could see how brilliant a population is. And I think this is good news. Mm -hmm. So if, if we learn that, and the other thing is, everybody knows on shale gas now. Shale gas is natural gas that is trapped in layers of hard clay-like rock anywhere from 500 meters to 2,000 meters beneath the surface. Shale is considered an unconventional source of natural gas, much like oil and the tar sands, because of the complicated and expensive process required to extract the gas. The process is called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking and involves sending a mixture of water, sand, and chemicals down a well to crack the shale and release the gas. Kim Cornelison. One of the tricks is to say at the beginning, there is just water and sand. And then they say, oh, there are chemicals, but they're very, you know, you can find them under your sink. <coughs> well, I don't think that you drink uh, gel water, for example. It's under your sink. And remember that usually we put <laughs> a lot on their skids. What is under your sink can be dangerous but there is way more than that. So if you don't ask questions, you don't get answers with that industry. Citizens groups also have many questions about the consumption of water and the contamination of groundwater and drinking water, and the AQLPA has pointed to large increases in greenhouse gas emissions. But Kim Cornelison and others say the potential problems go much further. Uh, the other thing is uh, methane. The methane can go from the cracks in the fracturing, that's a lot of, they think that in the States, uh, uh, they think that we're badly done, cracks and everything, is, the, is why there is so many problems in the States. The methane can reach the water. This is the kind of problems, and it's so big that the EPA, the Environmental Protection, Protection Agency, is doing a study now because they heard about more, they have more than a thousand complaints on water. David Kuhn, executive director of the Conservation Council of New Brunswick, was at the meeting to share information on his province's experience. Well, uh, essentially what people have to realize it's not just some wells. You have a whole uh, infrastructure that goes with this. Feeder pipes and pipelines and compressors and condensers, compressing stations and condensers. And the end effect is to industrialize the landscape, destroying the rural nature of the community altogether, wrecking people's quality of life and the character of those communities. Um, we've seen that in the United States, particularly in, uh, in Colorado and in, the, in that part of the United States. Um, it started off small, people didn't see it as a great risk. There was a well here and one way over there, and then they started, once the infrastructure was in place, adding more and more and more, so that it just totally covered the landscape. Um, and uh, we're very concerned about that in, in the long term happening in, in New Brunswick. Uh, we're like, like much of Quebec, we're a very rural province once you get outside of the cities and uh, a lot of people live in, in, the rural, in rural New Brunswick so it would be a, a catastrophe. Though the AQLPA and other groups have been speaking out on shale gas, many people still don't know about it and the Council of Canadians thinks more widespread awareness could change the situation. Council of Canadians member Jeff McDade. 
you know, to me, if people were aware of what we've been made aware of this evening, um, the, it would be shut down completely. So until we get to that point, I would have to say I'm not satisfied with the coverage. But Kim Cornelison says there are real alternatives available. But then there is this thing called biogas, which comes from waste, so it's actually solving many problems at the same time. And it could be very, we need to, to calculate how much it could be, how much biogas could be produced. But what is interesting is that you have energy independence with biogas because it's produced locally and it's, it's used locally. Mm. So actually you don't, you don't need shale gas in Quebec at all. If everybody does its little thing, and now there's a big petition at the uh, National Assembly, if everybody signs it, there's a lot of municipality asking for it. There is a lot of environmental groups, social groups. If everybody keeps on asking for it, they won't have the choice to do it. And already we can see them backing, and they need to back way more and to realize, whoa, there is a problem. Reporting for Ecolibrium, I'm Thomas Urbina.